We were going to make a big difference in pulling forward the disinflation that we're seeing even as of this morning. All right, Ed, we got to wrap it up Thanks. now. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Chris. Jared Bernstein, Economic Policy Advisor for Kamala and Biden. Um, so you said we hear you, um, but, uh, you know, we've been hearing that message in some form over the past three years. And the fact is the prices are not coming down. Uh, they're going up. Um, debt is also rising. That's going up. So why should Americans believe the president and vice president? Well, there's some prices that are definitely coming down. Uh, so there are pri airfares. Airfares are, hold on, airfares, hold on, hold on. Yes, airfares are lower now than when President Biden uh, took office. I don't give a fuck. Fair enough. Don't give a fuck. Um, but, uh, and of course, prescription... Prescription drugs, uh, if you look at prescription drugs, that's an area where we've taken firm action to lower prices. I would also say the following. We have more work to do. Prices are still too high. You have a point. You have a point. Don't laugh! This ain't reality TV! Energy prices too. I mean, it went from when the day President Biden came into office to today, the stuff that people need is up. So the, you know, the price of gas is down over the past year. Is the price of gas, you know, higher than when the president took office? Sure, that's going to be the case over many presidents because, you know, that's a, that's a, a price, it's a global price that tends to go up over time. I think the question again, the question you always have to ask yourself in this is twofold. One, are we taking action to help lower costs? I think on energy, the president has a great record. He uh, oversaw the, great, the, the largest release of barrels of oil from the strategic reserve, not just ours, but he coordinated. That's a good thing. Are you sure? For years, presidents would rely on the strategic petroleum reserve whenever there was international tension. But there's an issue this time. That reserve has been greatly depleted. That's because President Biden has tapped into the reserve multiple times during his presidency. In fact, over 200 million barrels of crude oil have been pulled out by the president since the beginning of last year, around 40 percent of what was stored. The White House says that has kept prices about 40 cents per gallon lower for you and your family. But it also means the reserve is now to the lowest levels since the 1980s. This is the siege. It's a goddamn siege. You don't have to go to hell. You're in hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people, for the people. But the people are retarded. <laughs> then strangled them, and finally dismembered their bodies. Bright, then do available. And homelessness and all that. And now, the voice you've been waiting for. There is a secret song at the center of the world, and its sound is like razors through flesh. I'm here to turn off the volume. <laughs> Kind of retarded. Well, let's start this out with a little blast from the past. From CNN Business, dated December 1st, 2021, so the end of Joey Skidmark's first year in office. Why inflation can actually be good for everyday Americans and bad for rich people. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> No one likes paying more for stuff. That's why inflation, especially the sharp price increases we've seen in recent months, feels like a dirty word. But on the whole, inflation can actually be a good thing for many working class Americans, especially those with a fixed rate debt like a 30-year mortgage. That's because wages are going up. Allegedly! 
which not only empowers workers, but gives them more money to pay down debt. Plus, in the case of a mortgage, your monthly payment will be the same, but your house will increase in value. But the thing about that is, say you bought a house 30 years ago for $100,000, and now you sell it for $500,000. So then you take that $500,000 and you buy a different house. And the only thing is, the new house that you're buying for $500,000 would have also been worth $100,000 30 years ago. So while it is true that you could say, oh, I'm $400,000 up from where I was 30 years ago, did your purchasing power increase at all? Anyway, mortgages, the vast majority of which are fixed-rate 30-year loans, make up nearly $11 trillion worth of America's current record-high $15 trillion in debt. Meanwhile, wages are rising along with prices. Bullshit essentially shrinking the real value of that debt. The same inflation benefit applies to anyone paying off federal student loans, which also have a fixed interest rate. As your income increases, you're essentially getting a discount on what you have to repay. Uh, and this part's my favorite. So far, wage growth broadly hasn't kept up with price increases. No shit. Interesting, because throughout this whole article, they've talked like wages have increased. So really, in the previous paragraph, it should have said, if your income increases, you're essentially getting a discount. Oh, but don't worry, analysts are saying that that may change in the new year as shipping bottlenecks begin to ease. Well, we all know how that one worked out, don't we? Because remember, this is the end of 2021, where they were still blaming everything on how much the economy was roaring back to life. And all those container ships were lined up for miles and miles waiting to unload in the ports. They said, oh, that's the only reason why prices have gone up. Not all debt shrinks with inflation, of course. Credit card interest rates, which largely aren't fixed, have shot up this year to an average of 17.13%, just under the all-time record high of 17.14 that was reached in 2019. And anyone living on a fixed income, such as retirees who aren't benefiting from wage increases that people in the labor force are seeing, allegedly, are feeling extra pain as prices go up. Well, now that we have the highest ever level of consumer credit card debt in this country, I wonder what the interest rate is now. Oh, uh, just under 25%. And I love how they threw in, oh, it's between 2276 and 2492, depending on the source. Where their source for the 2276 was back in May. The sources for just under 25 were this month. And also, LendingTree says 2492, which is the highest rate since they began tracking in 2019. I guess that sounds better than an all-time record high, because if in 2019 the all-time record high was 1714, I would say that 2492 would qualify as an all-time record breaker. But hey, what the fuck do I know, right? And then they go on to throw out this little consolation to all of us pathetic poors out there. Another group getting hit are people with exposure to government bonds. Think households with more than a million dollars who typically invest in both equities and debt. I love how they throw that out there and make it seem like, oh, look, these people are hurting too, when it would probably be much more accurate to say that they're just not accumulating wealth quite as fast as they were. And meanwhile, here we are almost three years later, and maybe I'm the weird one. You know, my fucking wages haven't gone up a bit in the past three years, let alone enough to offset the higher prices. Has yours? Am I the weirdo? Oh, but hey, rich people are hurting too. Why they're not making as big a returns on their investments. A nice little appeal to class envy there. And now on to some more current news. The Democratic National Convention starts today, and I have very little interest in watching it, although I might actually watch it tonight because I hear that Joey Skidmarks is going to be delivering a speech, and I'm the kind of guy that only ever watches a NASCAR race because I hope to see a wreck, and he's been on a real streak lately. With no help from Republicans, not a single Republican voted for this bill, period. Not one in the entire Congress. Now, the reason I say that is not to make a political point about them, not if they have gotten their lesson, but guess what? They want to, they... T -t -t Today, Junior? They want to, they, the guy we're running against, what's his name? <laughs> Donald Dump or Donald... Whatever. They want to get rid of this, what we passed. They, they're fighting to get rid of what we've just passed. No, I'm serious. 
What's his name? <laughs> Donald Dump or Donald whatever. He actually thought that was a good quip. He thought he was being real clever. And just like how the Mockingbird media spent past four plus years trying to convince everybody that he didn't have fucking dementia, now they get to pretend that Kamala isn't a drunken whore with an IQ below room temperature, along with her stolen Valor running mate who gives off some of the creepiest fucking vibes I've ever seen. And imagine being from Minnesota and four years ago watching your cities burn while this D-bag did absolutely nothing about it and now going, oh, you know what? He'd make a good vice president. I mean, just imagine being that fucking stupid. But I've mainly been chuckling about this full court press that the media is doing, trying to prop Kamala up and trying to convince everybody that she has nothing to do with the shite state of affairs that we all find ourselves in. She keeps saying, day one of my administration, I'm gonna do this and do that. But anybody with even half a brain is wondering, well, why the fuck haven't you done it for the past three and a half years? You are the second in command in this administration. So all these things that you're talking about you're gonna do, why don't you go ahead and whisper it in Joey's ear right now? Or maybe give him a fucking post-it note so he doesn't forget. But regardless, you're talking like you're not in the current administration. And that's why I'm not expecting to see her do any interviews other than softball bullshit. Because if somebody were to ask her even halfway tough questions, she's gonna look like a total asshat. Mainly because... She is a total asshat, and I really love the people on Twitter that are wasting no opportunity to point out just how full of shit the media is when it comes to her. Take this for example. CNBC on August 12th had the headline, Vance wants to raise the child tax credit to $5,000. Here's why that could be difficult. And then four days later, the very same person puts out an article saying, Harris calls for expanded child tax credit up to $6,000 for family with newborns. So apparently raising the tax credit to 5,000 could be difficult, but raising it to 6,000 somehow wouldn't be. And a shit ton of media outlets apparently decided to glom on to this particular bit of word salad. Never let anyone take your joy from you. I call myself a joyful warrior. Right? Never let anyone take your joy from you. But apparently, that's become the buzzword they decided to run with. Joy is fueling her campaign, bringing back the joy, joyful message. Harris is pushing joy, a joyful campaign. And it's just hilarious to contrast that all with how they treat Trump. Last week, he did that two-hour interview with Elon Musk, and it was pretty decent, pretty entertaining, although not nearly as entertaining as this. media reports on it were hilarious. They all basically said at least one of three things. Either they mentioned that Trump was rambling and slurring in his speech, or that it was all glitchy because they had a little bit of problems at the beginning. And some of them actually had the gall to point out that Elon was lobbing him softball questions. Oh, the irony! It's too much! It's surprising that you actually understand that concept because you haven't said word one about the current president not having done a single interview his entire administration that was the least bit adversarial. Whereas by my guesstimation, it's been like 50-50 for the number of times Trump has actually had a jovial and friendly kind of interview with someone like this or Tucker or that shitbag Sean Hannity. Well, there's been just as many interviews that went like this. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? It's a little bit on the nose, isn't it? I mean, aren't you supposed to at least pretend like you're an objective journalist? Oh yeah, and we also had a very important declaration from the World Health Organization this past week. Today, 
the emergency committee met and advised me that, in its view, the situation constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. I have accepted that advice. The detection and rapid spread of a new clade of MPOX in Eastern DRC, its detection in neighboring countries that had not previously reported MPOX, and the potential for further spread within Africa and beyond is very worrying. In addition to other outbreaks of other clades of MPOX in other parts of Africa, it's clear that a coordinated international response is essential to stop these outbreaks and save lives. Well, it wasn't exactly surprising that they made some kind of public health declaration in the run-up to the election, but I wasn't exactly expecting it to be the return of the monkeypox, now rebranded as the M-pox. Oh, that's stupid! Really stupid! And that shit about a coordinated international response is needed to stop the outbreaks and save lives. What the fuck do you mean, a coordinated international response? What are you even suggesting? Oh wait, let me guess, another fucking jab? And they'll have a bunch of these idiots lining up to get one. It would probably be a much more effective strategy for the international community to get together and put out a PR campaign saying, Stop fucking people that look like this. If somebody that looks like this comes up and starts talking to you, you should be saying something like, or maybe even that shit on your lip got some shit on his lip dog because unless this strain is radically different from the last one that was spreading it's almost exclusively spread by as Tedros put it men who have sex with other men I don't know why the fuck they couldn't just say amongst gay men like oh no 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 I I'm not gay I just you know like to have sex with men sometimes and I got news for you that means you're gay so we could do like a two weeks to slow the spread, but it'll be close your cheeks for just two weeks. Yes! Another yes. Day. And then there we go. Problem solved. Slancha. All I have in this world is my thoughts and my word. And I don't break them for no one.